All right, Brittany Jackson, one of my old teammates back, this goes back to the high school days. We had uh, one of my college teammates on last week, but now we're going way back to uh, the high school basketball days. We got Brittany Jackson here. Britt, just introduce yourself real quick. Where are you from? High school, AAU, all that. What's up, y'all? I'm Brittany Jackson. I graduated from Nazareth Regional High School in Brooklyn, New York, and I had finished my college career at the University of Detroit Mercy. Yep, yep. So Britt's from Brooklyn. You're, wait, well, you're, you, you literally live right around the corner from Nazareth. Yeah, I live in Canarsie. Right. I live like five minutes away from Nazareth. Right. So mm -hmm. talk about who did you play for um, in AAU originally? And I first I first started out with Brooklyn Saints. Mm -hmm. Talk about that a little bit. Brooklyn Saints, who was, who was the coach? Where are they at of all that? So Brooklyn Saints is kind of in the East Flatbush area. And it was Joe Murphy and his wife, Rochelle Murphy. Okay. So they had ran Brooklyn Saints. I started in 2007, I believe. Mm -hmm. Started playing with them. Didn't play too much because I was always scared to, you know, do things on the court. <laughs> I didn't Why? Wait, wait let's, let's dig into that, though. Yeah. So 2007, you were, were you in middle school when you jumped on that? Mm -hmm. That was like your first travel team, right? Yeah, my first okay. day. Okay, so this is like, like for me, I played on the Long Island Lightning. That was yeah. my first team. <laughs> So, right, like, those beginner teams where you're kind of just starting to play competitively. So, when you yeah. first jumped on that team, you were pretty shy, you'd say? Like, were you – Yeah. You didn't, I was really you, shy. I didn't even get to play my game how I wanted to. Right. Because, so, yeah. Mm -hmm. Keep going. Yeah, yeah. Because the coach from Brooklyn Saints, Joe, Joe Murphy, he had recruited me from my CYO team. Um, right. Resurrection, that's the team. <laughs> yeah. And you yeah. were the stud on your CYO team, I'm sure, yeah. right? Yeah, CYO was easy, that's why. Mm -hmm. <laughs> So then when you got recruited, though, to go to another level team, mm -hmm. what, so what was it like? Do you remember right, right away? Yeah, it was way better competition. I'll say that. Um, it was girls who I played against who were the best on their CYO team. Right. I was with the Saints team. So I'm like, okay, I play my game. Um, then after that, I left Brooklyn Saints probably about two to three years later, played mm -hmm. for Harlem, USA. And when you left the Brooklyn Saints, were you were you by the at that point like the best on that team you had gotten to be or one of the not best? Not really. Not really. Okay. Not really. I okay. Had a little confidence. I tried to, but then eventually I had went on and played for Harlem USA. Okay. Um, and uptown Coach Hammer Stevens. I played with him for a little, and I had I eventually just started playing for both. I started playing for Harlem USA and New York City Heat with Kevin White. Oh, with yeah. uh, with Maylin, right? Elin, Jordan Augustus, Michaela Hernandez, Khadijah Dickinson. I can go down the line. We had I, a, I completely forgot yeah. about that you played on with them. His, that's who we used to play. We used to play you, right? Yeah. When I was on the Long Island Lightning, that's yep. the key. We played the Brooklyn Saints a couple times, but it was the Heat. Yeah. It was the Jordan, Heat. Jordan, Michaela. Yeah, a yep. lot of, basically for everyone who doesn't know, these are a lot of Division One who ended up going Division One. these players. So yeah. Britt was on a super competitive team, and you guys, you guys were really good. Yeah, that was – that was a squad. We had a good so, team. So when you jumped on that team, that was an even higher level than the Saints, for yeah. sure, right? Yeah. Okay. Uh, kind of. Because I'll say the Saints, Saints had Joella Gibson. Oh. Kelsey Gibson. Joella, she uh, she went to Siena. I played her yeah. all uh, my college career. Yeah, that's one of my closest friends to this day. Joella, um, yeah. Yeah. So after that, I had ended up playing for the Heat, and then I ended up moving on to Exodus. Right. Yeah. So, at this point, were you going to Naz? No, I was going to Mary Lewis. Oh, to Mary Lewis yes, okay. So talk talk about your high school, your high school yeah. journey a little bit then. So, I went to Mary Lewis from September to November. <laughs> Where is Mary Lewis for people listening, just to give context? It's in Jamaica States in Queens. Okay. Yeah, so I went there for about three months. Um, it was me, Jordan Augustus, Maylin, Batista, Michaela Hernandez, and Khadija Dickinson. They called us the Fat Five freshmen coming into Mary Lewis. Yeah. And I had, we had workouts and all stuff. Workouts went well. So then I had gotten in the car with my dad and he's like, Apache called me. Oh. Not yeah. so Apache had called my dad. He was like, hey, where's Britt at? What school is she at? He's like, oh, she's at Mary Lewis with Jordan, Maylin, everybody. He's just like, okay, well, come down to Naz. We're still here. Come down for a meeting tonight. Right. So just like a meeting. He was like, I just want to come. He's like, just come down and come talk. Just come talk. I'm like, okay. I'll come down and go talk. So sat down, talked to Apache for about 
three to four hours. And he has a way with words like that. Oh, he he, yeah, he does. I won't f- ever forget his last words that he kept, sa- he kept saying to me. He said to me more than once. He kept saying, you're going to be great. You're going to be okay. I got you. So I'm like, okay, like I'm, tr- I'm trusting you. And my parents said it to him. They were like, we're trusting you, Apache. You know, if he does uh, eventually transfer to NAS, this would be a big jump. And we want to make sure like our daughter's set, you know, she's going to be set in stone. Like she has a school to go to eventually. Right. You're you trusting know, him with, with your yeah. basketball future. And for those, exactly. again, just to give more context, Apache, uh, Pashal, 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 uh, his, yeah, so he basically founded uh, Exodus, the AAU program, it's Exodus New York City now, big EYBL Nike team, um, and he passed away when we were, what year was that? I would say 20. I was a sophomore, it was my first year at NAS, yeah, so maybe 2012, 2013, 2012, 2013. Yeah, um, but he's made a huge impact in so many, you know, players' lives, uh, up to this day, they still honor him, and you know, Britt is just talking about here, the way that this guy spoke and you just believed everything he said. He was a great coach, a great guy. So just giving you guys some context to back on that. But so because you lived so close to Naz, was that the reason you went to take that meeting? That, yes, because my dad was taking me to Mary Lewis every day, almost every day. Like we would be up at five in the morning. To drive to school. Just so I can get to school on time. All right, well, hold up here though, because this is a huge thing. Players always say, you know, like the younger kids that reach out to me, um, how do I get seen or how do I get to another school? And they don't realize the sacrifice that you have to make to get there. Yes. (laughs) Driving, you're waking up at 5 a.m. to go to school. Your dad and your parents are driving you every single day. So they had to sacrifice too, right? So, I mean, I think people don't realize that the same thing with me, you know, I lived an hour from school. If you want to go to a school that's going to give you opportunities, you got to be willing to drive. You got to be willing to make sacrifice. You got to be willing to get up early, stay up late. So exactly. just wanted to hit on that. Like you're a perfect example. Yeah. And we were always up at like 5.30 morning out of the house by 6.15 <laughs> just right. to get to school by 7.30. But yeah. Um, so then after we had talked with Apache, two days later, I got my papers from Mary Lewis and then, I end up coming to NAS. <laughs> right. So I can imagine that probably at first didn't go over that well, right? I mean, just to, just to quickly touch upon it, you know, leaving, you just got there, right? So you were three months in having to, how, what kind of decision, like, were you happy with that decision or was it more your parents? I would say it was more, more of me. Okay. I didn't really want to put that on my parents because my parents always wanted the best for me mm-hmm. and I wanted the best for myself. Like I always worked hard for what I wanted and I was just like you know not saying if I would have stayed at Mary Lewis I would have never went D1 but it was better opportunities at Nazareth and Apache has been around the game for so long and coach Ron and Lauren Best it was just like I can't I can't miss that opportunity right because he told me to come play for Exodus I didn't even get to say that he told me to come play for Exodus since the fifth grade Apache Apache knew me since CYO that's when he seen me play right and he came up to my dad, talked to my dad, but we didn't know too much about AAU then. That was in the fifth grade. We did mm-hmm. not know about AAU too much. My dad didn't know about Exodus. He didn't know who Apache was. We didn't know nothing because I was still fresh yep. to the game of basketball, especially yep. girls basketball because I played with boys in the beginning. Mm-hmm. Um, and then, you know, we had talked, and he kept saying, like, you know, I got you. You're going to be great. You're going to be all right. I'm like, okay. You know, that decision, me leaving for Mary Lewis and Nazareth, it did hurt me. I had, you know – our friendship, I would say, with the rest of the freshmen that was that we came in that came mm-hmm. in together, it kind of went downhill. But you know, we try to patch things up. I'm still cool with them today. And you know, it's a business, right? You gotta do what you <laughs> have to do. To me. At yeah. the end of the day, like what's best for you and those friends. Eventually, they understood and they now understand. Yeah. So, so at the time, it was tough, but yeah, like everybody, we all end up going to school for free, and I'm happy for everybody. Like. That's something that I always want to see, like, all of us going somewhere. Like, even at Nazareth, like, I wanted everybody to go somewhere. It doesn't matter, like, D1, D2, D3. As long as we all go somewhere, our parents don't have to pay for anything. Right. That's all that matters. Let's, um, yeah. What are, so when you got to Naz, mm-hmm. obviously three months into school, so you were a little late to kind of, like, yeah. did you know any of the players on the team before that, or did you just know? Who did you know from there? I actually didn't know anybody. Clay. <laughs> and I knew of, I knew of there you, at that time. too. You were a freshman. I was, so that was my first year, too, because I, I went to NAS as a sophomore. Yeah. I never yeah. went there as a freshman. So it was both of our first years, yeah. Right, exactly. So I think we knew of each other. Mm-hmm. Right. But yeah, you knew Clay, okay. Yeah, I knew Clay, but she wasn't there at the time. Right, right. 
Okay. Everybody else I knew through the basketball world, but like you, you even know. Once, once I came in front of me, I didn't talk for about four or five months. <laughs> I did not speak at all. Right, right. So you like, were, I, you were super shy, yeah. I was very shy. I was right. kind of scared too because I'm playing against mm-hmm. uh, y'all. Some trees, Jen. Like you, <laughs> Taylor Ford, Brianna Sydney, Lisa Blair. I can go down the list. It was a bunch of trees. I could not. Right. I couldn't even get to the basket half the right. time. <laughs> So before, uh, we, before we go right into basketball, what's the first thing you remember, like the difference between the school in general, Mary Lewis versus Naz? Like you walk into Mary Lewis for the first week, you spend a week at Naz, big differences in like the school, facilities, yeah. stuff like that? I would say facilities were 10 times better at Naz. No disrespect to Mary Lewis, but mm-hmm. it was right. 10 times better at Naz. We okay. had more sports programs and all that stuff, more activity. Yeah. No, it was similar with the activities. Um... Naz was more laid back. <laughs> Naz was more, I was, this is where I was trying to go to, yeah. So uniform yeah. you had at Mary Lewis too, though, right? Both mm-hmm. Catholic schools. Yeah. Then, but Naz was more laid back. Really laid back. They were laid back until like a couple years later, and then they started yeah, getting crazy. Two years in, it was just like, okay. <laughs> we have to get stuff yeah. together. I, I remember I could get away with wearing any shoes my, yeah. my first year. Mm-hmm. Sneakers, Jordans. <laughs> wearing, wearing hoodies when we didn't even have a game. <laughs> Yeah, and then I remember my senior year, though, I had to wear the white button-down. I was like, what is this? Yeah. They changed the polos to the button-downs. <laughs> about them white button-downs. <laughs> they would come after me about my sneakers. Yeah. yeah. That was, oh. But, all right, so shifting back to basketball then. Mm-hmm. So for your first year, you just named a couple of the players that were there. You're obviously yeah. the youngest, being a freshman. And they had that prep team that year at NAS, right? Yes. We yeah. had the prep team. So at NAS, we had JV team, a varsity team. And we had a prep school team, which was just a bunch of, I guess it was like kind of like a JUCO kind of thing, right? Yeah. Like, how would you describe that, that prep team? It was like. It was, yeah, it was kind of like a JUCO thing. Right. It was like, a, yeah, just an extra yeah. year for players. But that team was stacked. Yeah. A lot of <laughs> talent. So when you guys, when we're talking about New York City basketball, for those who are not from New York City, I'd say it's definitely the most competitive. It was at least. I don't know really about now, but. Back from 2012 to 2016-ish, right? New York City basketball is on another level in terms of yeah. the competition. So just name a few more of those players that you remember playing with at NAS. Okay. Um, uh, Jen Faye. <laughs> <laughs> Jasmine Belt. Sophia Roma. Beyond one of us. Chiclasia Brown. Shanice Woodson. Yep. Yeah. Butler. Sadie Edwards. Sadie, yep. I don't know her last, I can't remember her last name, but Destiny. Yeah. The common thing here is that everybody pretty much went on to play some level of college Mm -hmm. basketball. And Mm -hmm. most, for the majority, it was all D1. D1, yeah. I don't, I think think it might have been everybody. Yeah. Right. So when you first got there, though, I remember me, when I first got there, I was like, I am not good enough to play. Right? Did you feel the same way when you first got there? Absolutely. (laughs) (laughs) Right, right. I was, I think, did I I probably cried. I probably did too. Yeah. The first workout, I cried. After the first workout. Because, or probably like the third workout. Yeah, what we I mean. ran. For, I don't know what drill it was or who pissed off Apache, but I know we ran. And we ran and we ran and we ran. And De Niro was there at the time and we kept oh, running. Right. And we, we, we didn't leave the gym until almost 11 p.m. that time. Oh we was in the gym for almost three hours. I think I remember this. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and you were like, what did I get myself into, kind of, right? Like, Basically, yeah. Oh my god. Yeah. My mom was pissed because she was waiting outside for like two hours. <laughs> um yeah, she yeah, it was just all I can say is it helped me become the player I am today. So yeah, we're gonna get right let's get right yeah. into it. So <laughs> freshman year, did you play JV or varsity? I can't I remember. played varsity. Mm-hmm. You played varsity. You, played you didn't play much though, right? And I think I had to sit out for a couple months because okay. I changed. yeah. So it was like uh, the whole year was pretty much you like a learning process, right? Yeah. You'd say? Mm-hmm. So Going into those practices and stuff, do you remember, like, were you, like, very nervous before every practice, before the games? Was it kind of like, obviously, you're just kind of starting to get to know the teammates. You didn't really know everybody that well. What do you remember, like, just before practices, before games? Like, what was your kind of mindset? Honestly, Jen? <laughs> yeah, you could just be straight. Yeah, completely. Sometimes I was praying that he did not put me in the game at the time. <laughs> or put me, in, put me in the scrimmage in practice. And I'm like, yo, I really don't want to mess up, like, if – I say my team was winning in practice or whatever, and I come in, I'm like, I really don't want to mess up. Right. So I was just always nervous. I would say my whole freshman year, I was nervous. 
yeah, I, I think for, for me, I was just, when I, when I came in as a sophomore, I tore my ACL like a couple months mm -hmm. before, so I didn't play at all. So it was yeah. a little bit easier because I didn't have the pressure of, oh, is he going to put me in? You know what I mean? Because I couldn't play anyway. Yeah. So that's definitely like a thing that a lot of players go through though, right? Like they're either even in college, freshman in college, freshman in high school, and they're like on, they're, might, they're on a really good team where they're not the best, but they might still be a little nervous when they get in the games and whatnot. Looking back now, do you, what would you have done differently, do you think? In terms of, I, as a younger have, player. Yeah, I should have communicated more with my teammates because I was, like I said, I didn't talk to you guys <laughs> about four to five months because I was always just nervous. I don't know. I just stayed like close to, I just stayed to myself a lot. Right. Um, I could have gotten an extra work, you know, like working out with an uh, older player or alumni or whatever, mm -hmm. just so they can show me more of the game and all that stuff. Mm -hmm. I think that was, that's what I should have done. Right. right. Yeah. Yeah. Do you, and I kind of agree with that too. Like, I feel like once my relationship with everybody, like I started to get closer with them, like once we all became kind of like really good friends by the end of, you know, that first year going yeah. into that second year at that school, I think it's so much easier to play with people when you're, when you already have an off court relationship too, right? Like sure. when you know that I'm not going to scream at you for messing up because we're cool. And maybe, maybe I will, right? Yeah. Maybe we're good friends off the court anyway, but like it takes some pressure off knowing that you have people that kind of care about you off the court as well, right? Yeah, yeah it does. For That's sure, true. yeah. So, and I remember, you know, playing with, let's just use Bianca as an example here. Yeah. Playing with Bianca, she's unreal, you know? And <laughs> I remember me, the first time I'm playing with her, I'm like, oh, I just don't want to mess up. She throws me, you know, she makes yeah. these passes. Yeah. I'm sitting there like, I got to catch it. I got to catch it. <laughs> Dang, yeah, we had the same mindset. <laughs> right, right. I was like, I don't want to fumble the ball. <laughs> I don't want right. to turn it over. You have yeah. a wide open layup. You're thinking twice about it, but... Yeah looking back now I think everyone kind of has to go through that process if they want to get to where they want to go almost mm -hmm. right like if you're going to put yourself in a competitive setting you're not going to always be the best player mm -hmm. and you know I was never the best player you probably weren't ever the best player at NAS right I mean maybe by your senior year you were but yeah it's a learning process and you got to be able to be willing to kind of mess up to get yelled at all that kind of stuff and it's it's not fun in the moment but mm -hmm. looking back now how thankful are you that you went to NAS? I'm very thankful, honestly. That whole process. If it wasn't for, you know, because Patrick had passed away for our freshman and your sophomore year, and Coach Ron and Lauren had took over, and Coach Ron mainly took over the program. Honestly, if it wasn't for Coach Ron mm -hmm. and Coach Shaw, I can't leave Coach Shaw. Yeah. If it wasn't for them, you know, building my confidence, and Coach Ron telling me, you know, Britt, we're going to have – 6 a.m. workouts before school like if it wasn't him dragging me out of my house to come work out and get my game better I wouldn't be you know I would have never went to Detroit right coach yeah coach Ron Kelly is he was life-changing for me as well yeah um, we had a year with Apache at NAS mm -hmm. coach Ron took over and you know I think Apache was obviously very proud of what he's done there what he continues to do there yeah you know, battling everything that he's been through as well personally and I remember, though, you and Coach Ron had, like, a really special bond. I, yeah. I, I remember just from the outside watching, looking into that. Yeah. Not just because you lived right there, but it was easy for him to come get you out the house. Yeah. <laughs> but you guys, he always did really believe in you, and he was yeah. extra hard on you. Very. Yeah. He, he, Coach Ron always pissed me off, I'm not going to lie. <laughs> talk, talk about your relationship a little bit, like, from high school to where it is now. Well, actually – I'm going to go back again. I knew Coach Ron since the seventh grade. Mm -hmm. I, was, I was working out with the drill masters, Coach Ron De Niro, since the seventh grade. Mm -hmm. I had stopped probably the middle of – I don't know what year that was. I had stopped for a while because I don't, I don't know. I can't remember. Right. But when I eventually came to NAS, he was just like, oh, stop. Like, I used to train you. Like, I'm, this is Brittany. Like, I know who you are. Yeah. So then, like, I would say my sophomore year, that summer of – the summer going into my sophomore year, our relationship has gotten closer. Like, it was every day we were working out. Like, every single day. Summer, too. Yeah. yeah, he always had something for me to do. And then once I seen basketball was getting more serious for me, he was telling me, like, look, if you really want to play college basketball, like, you really have to work on your game more. Mm -hmm. So then 5 a.m. started. <laughs> I was on the gun. Like, so a lot of people never knew. I was me and Nia Johnson. Nia Johnson started coming along after. She was a yeah. freshman. Mm -hmm. We went to NAS at 5.30 in the morning, finished around 7.30, just on the gun, just shooting. Wow, I didn't even know that. Yeah. I remember at lunchtime, sometimes we would get mm -hmm. up there and we would shoot and during yep. the lunch 
lunch. During lunch time, like before, if we had games that day or whatnot. Wow. But yeah, he had even before. It was like before the season and during the ski- season. We were up at five in the morning, mm-hmm. and Nas getting up shots, working out. <laughs> right. Like probably, I will say, it wasn't. It, at one point, it was every day, but then it had to get short to three days out the week because the season started. Mm-hmm. He wanted us to rest and stuff. But yeah. And then Coach Shaw too was, you know, he. Mm-hmm. Loved it just as much as Coach Ron did, and he yeah. had a huge impact on us as well. And he's now coaching, right? He's a head coach now. Yeah. Uh, I believe so, Bronx Community College, yeah. Exactly, Brunswick Community, yeah. So yeah. he made a huge impact for sure. What do you remember about your uh, recruiting process? When did you start getting recruited? Mm-hmm. Um, do you feel like, you know, did you have a lot of options? What, what, was, what was your process like? Uh, I will say I had, I had gotten a lot of letters, you know, regular letters. From Everybody, me. yep, yep. We won colleges um, in high interest my junior year. Junior year, yeah, that's one of the offers. <laughs> right, that and that's what people get confused, Britt, right? Yeah. A lot of players, oh, I'm getting letters from XYZ, this school, this school. They, they, yeah. I, they want me to fill out a questionnaire. That doesn't mean anything. Until right. you're Send it to 100 other girls. Mm-hmm. So, Keep going, yeah. Yeah, like I was just getting high interest from, I believe it's Seattle. Um, we would have we played you. <laughs> yeah, I know. Um, St. John's at one point, but I will never forget. I had a bad game against St. Francis Prep. Never heard of St. John's again. Um, <laughs> it's, it's very cutthroat, isn't it? It's, yeah. very, it's a business, yeah. and people don't get that yet. It really is. And another thing what affected me from getting recruited was my body language. Ah, this is huge. This is huge. Yep. Keep body going. language is a big, big thing. Like, even if it doesn't look like, oh, like you're slugging your shoulders or you're sitting in the chair any kind of way yeah. or you're pissed off on the court because you didn't make a shot, they watch every single thing. That's why college coaches at AAU tournaments, they have at least probably one coach coming to them or two to three coaches so they can literally watch every single thing that, that you're doing. Right. It doesn't even matter about the scoring or how you're playing defense. They want to see everything overall. And I don't mean to skip, but, like, mm-hmm. when I got to Detroit, that was one thing that my coach told me, the coach who got me, Tara Fleming. She said, Britt, what affected you was your body language. And I'm just like, damn, like. Oh, as, that was as soon as you got to Detroit? She told me that. She was like, because I told her, I said, you know, I didn't have a lot of schools offering me and all that stuff. She said, what affected you was your body language. Right. And it affected me my freshman year in college. And sophomore year, I had to clean it up. Because I'm like, you know, if people are saying my body language looks bad, like, I'll miss a shot and be like, damn, like, I'll just take myself out the game. Mm-hmm. That so was you struggled, my, you struggled with that in high school, obviously. Mm-hmm the most mm-hmm. with the body language but so then so you think that that limited your opportunities in terms of yeah. schools recruiting you but mm-hmm. Detroit took to talk about Detroit how did they get in the mix mm-hmm. they obviously took a chance on you then right if, yeah. if, talk about that a little bit so I had first committed to a JUCO um I, I can't remember the name <laughs> about five six years ago now um okay. Lewisburg Lewisburg okay. in North Carolina I had committed there. I went to, I went down there. Me and my parents, we drove down there, looked at the campus, talked to the coach. It was a D1 JUCO. Mm-hmm. All their girls went to high D1s in SEC schools. So they went to really good schools like South Carolina, Duke, right. Kentucky. So for like, people, yeah, for yeah. people, again, listening, the plan would be to go there for a year or two, get mm-hmm. yourself ready, and then you'd go to that D1 school. Yep. Exactly. And that's what I was going to do. I didn't mind going to a JUCO. I mean, I really wanted to go D1 first, but – Whatever came to me at that point in time, I had to take it. I didn't, I didn't sign with any school up until June. So I signed with them the end of May. And then I give it, it was, I believe it was on June 3rd in 2015. I was in the gym <laughs> working out. <laughs> and my dad, he just, I think we were in NAS. My dad, we were in the gym working out. And then he was upstairs and KP from Rose Classic. That's like another, he's Classic. like my second phone. For Rose Classic, we could have a whole yeah. conversation on that. Because I had worked for Rose Classic too. KP, he called my dad. He was like, hey, what are you guys doing tomorrow? And my dad's like, you know, nothing. He was like, okay, well, pack your bags tonight. You guys are going to Detroit tomorrow. They want to offer you a full ride. Oh, my God. So this so is I'm out of nowhere. shooting on the gun. Literally, I'm working out. My dad's like, Britt, we got to go. Like, you got to get home. You got to shower. We're about to go to Detroit. I'm like, for what? He was like, they're about to offer you a full ride. All they want to see you do work out in front of them. I just had to do one workout in front of them. Mm-hmm. Offer it right then and there. I'm sitting there in disbelief. I'm like, nah, there's no way. 
There's no. Right, that doesn't happen. It doesn't usually happen like that. Yeah. It was, Jen, when I say it was so random, how everything happened, I get it. <laughs> Went down there next day on June 5th, June 4th, signed my papers, I believe, on June 5th. No, on June 4th. I signed my papers that same day. So did you ever figure out, so how did they, did KP put you on to them? Is that how they, so he kind of, how did that happen? Did you end up finding so, out how that worked? Coach Tara Fleming, she, she doesn't coach anymore, but she was the one who got me to Detroit. She's like my second mother. Um, coach T and KP, they were really good friends. Mm -hmm. So, you know, Coach T, she was the associate head coach at Canisius. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. She was associate head coach at Canisius. She watched me play at Rose Classic, a lot of times when Rose Classic had college coaches come in, mm -hmm. I think like in 2014, 2015, yeah, yeah. they changed the rules and all that stuff. So it was like September for like the late, I think the dead period, whatever it was for mm -hmm. AAU. And she had came, she watched me play. And I remember KP telling me that like, Kenichas was looking at me, but they can't take me because they just signed another point card. Right. So I was like, oh, okay. Like, but he was like, you know, they're trying to still work out something, but if not, he's like, don't worry, just be patient. Everything's going to work out. And Coach Ron told me the same thing. Yeah, be patient. So, mm -hmm. Coach T had ended up getting the associate. No, she was the assistant coach at Kenesha. She got the associate head coaching job at Detroit. Oh. And leaving that May or – Right, and she had already seen you. Exactly. And Detroit had literally one point guard. Right. And she remembered me. She was like, oh, yeah, there's a point guard back in Brooklyn at KP. Told me, you know, she's good. She can shoot the ball and everything. Mm -hmm. She was. She told Coach Bernard Scott, who's the head coach, who was the head coach at Detroit at the time. You know, she had told him, and you know, Brittany Jackson, she's, st she's still available. Point guard. She's a good kid and all that stuff. Called me, and that's how I ended up in Detroit. <laughs> wow. So you yeah. literally hopped on a plane. And mm -hmm. at this point, though, obviously you were committed to the community college. So any kind of D1 offer, you were like, I'm, I'm, I'm jumping on that, right? Like, it didn't really matter to you too much, right? Yeah. Yeah, because that was always my dream. Right. So yeah. it wasn't like a thing like you're going to look at the school and see how nice it is. You were like, yeah. I want this offer right away kind of thing, right? Yeah. yeah. Honestly. <laughs> no, that's, that's, that's an awesome story. And it just goes to show, yeah. though, like coaches that see you one place, they might not be at that same school, right? Like she saw you as the Kenesha's coach, but then ends up at Detroit and remembers you. So like you said before, always putting on, you know, your best game, no matter what, because you don't know who's in the gym yeah. watching. Yeah. Right. Sure. Yeah. Right. So when you get to Detroit, let's let's go right in there. So freshman year, coach talks to you about your body language, right? Is that mm -hmm. so that was still kind of like eating at you a little bit? Yeah. Cuz I didn't I was trying to learn how to adjust from high school to college, right. especially playing basketball. I knew it was going to be a whole different ball game. But then after a while, you know, just playing Cause I played a lot. I played a lot my whole, my freshman year. It was only seven of us. <laughs> there was only seven of you on the team. Seven of us on the team, and we ended up finishing in fourth place in the Horizon League. Wow, that's impressive. And that's you, you guys play against. You play in the same league as Green Bay. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah, yeah. 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 Green Bay is a powerhouse. Yeah. <laughs> we used to. I mean, we never played them, but you know the top mid major rankings. They were always on the top, and we always kind of they were they were always pretty good. So that was a good team. Mm -hmm. Can you, you you good? Good. can you hear me yeah it was breaking up okay yeah we're good but uh yeah so you got there and then so you played a lot your freshman year that's different than most most people do not play their freshman year of college yeah I wasn't but, expecting to play my freshman year I'm gonna be honest with you so how nervous were you playing as a freshman or Very. were you not oh you were okay oh I was nervous I will say my first game what I was saying yeah it was like an exhibi exhibition or scrimmage or whatever I was pretty nervous mm -hmm. But then, you know, when regular season started, I'm like, okay. No, it was on um, non-conference. I'm like, okay. Right. We were playing against Michigan. We played Michigan State. We oh, you. We were playing against a top, top team. So mm -hmm. I was a little nervous. I'm like, oh, my God. Like, I've seen these girls play before. And I have to play against them. Like, I got to bring up the ball against them. So, yeah. so at the short, you guys always played a really tough non-conference schedule? You right. played the best? Always, always put us in a tough non-conference. How cool is that, though? Like, just talk about the experiences. Obviously, you played a lot of those games on the road, right? You played yeah. at Michigan, at Michigan State, right? Talk about those games a little bit. It was really fun. Mm -hmm. I want at some time, at some point. right? <laughs> at some, <laughs> yeah. the fan base, you know, they're different at bigger schools. Like, cause our school was a mid, you know, low right. D one. We didn't really have a big fan base, mm -hmm. but fan base at Michigan State, 
you walk into those gyms and you're like, holy yeah. shit, right? Yeah, Jen, I shit my pants a couple of times. Come on now. But I was saying, I think what really got me the most was at Michigan State. <laughs> we, we played there too. We played there my junior year. Yeah. yeah, my freshman year, we played against Arielle Powers. I think she plays for... Mm-hmm. She's on the Mystics now in the WNBA. Yeah. Jen, that girl's coming down with the ball. I'm now, it's like two, two on one. Yo, Jen, I've seen a deer with headlights. I, I kid you not. I just moved out the way. I'm like, yo, fuck that. I'm moving. <laughs> I'm not I'm not going to get in your way. You can go to the basket. I'm and like, this is your freshman year? Yep. Oh, my God. And <laughs> yeah. Okay, let's just talk about – so you're obviously you're a smaller player. Not everybody listening doesn't know that. How tall are you, like 5'7"? Five, 5'7", seven? Five, seven, five, Okay, seven. but you're, you, were, you were never big. You were always pretty, yeah. pretty small. Did you – how was the weight room transition? Did you put on weight? What did yeah. you do to kind of, you know, to try and make it better, the fact that you're, you know, that you're small, a smaller player? What did you do to try and stand out even though you were smaller? So, like, freshman year, I was damn near the fastest. I had to be the fastest on the team, so yep. – I was the tiniest, kind of. Um, I, like, I don't know. Like, I didn't put on a lot of muscle weight until my sophomore year. Okay. I started eating more and, like, bulking up more, like, taking the – um, I can't really remember the name. Muscle milk? Like, muscle milk. Yeah. Oh, my God. It was so nasty. Right. But I had to because I'm like, you know, I don't want to keep getting pushed on the court, like, yeah. my freshman year. Mm-hmm. So I made sure my sophomore year I took – you know, I made sure I drank more muscle milk. I You're worked out a bit more. I ate better and all that stuff. I made sure, like, you know, everything was good for me. So I won't get knocked over in the game. Right. Right. So then I had eventually bulked up, like, with muscles in my arms and in my legs. But then, you know, throughout the season, you know, in weight in the weight room, and stuff, we're not really pushing a lot of weight. So it's, you know, it's a lot of, like, band work or just a little yeah, just like stuff. Main stuff. Yeah. Yeah. So then I started losing all my muscle weight. And, <laughs> you know, we're running a lot. I'm playing a lot my sophomore year now. So it's just like, okay. I don't even have the time to, you know, keep drinking the muscle milk and all that stuff. But I tried to like maintain that as best as I could. But I know sophomore year I put on I put on more weight in my junior year too. But speed was always you always use your speed to your advantage. Like that was your strength, would you say? Yeah, Fit. my quickness. Running, yeah. yeah. And you were playing, were you a were you a point guard or a two guard in college? Both. Both. Okay. So you mixed it up a little bit. As yeah. a freshman, what did you play more? I had to <laughs> a point guard. I had to be a point guard more. Wow. Yeah. Okay. It was only oh, me man. and mm-hmm. my teammate Rosanna Reynolds, Rosie. Both of us was like sharing the point guard spot, but she was really a two and a three. Right. And that's yeah. a huge deal coming in as a freshman to take over a point guard. That's a point guard is is the hardest position in basketball in general. So to be a freshman transitioning having to learn a whole new system and then expect it to actually play because again not a lot of freshmen usually play so you have a year to learn from everybody and you had to you had to run the plays and run the system as soon as you got there pretty much yeah. how yeah. was that like was that was it more of a mental battle did you learn more stuff about you know basketball iq wise did you mm-hmm. talk about that a little bit i would say i learned my basketball iq like went up in college i would say that due to my teammates too right because, you know, obviously they've been there, they've played the game and all that stuff. And, you know, I never had really had a problem with remembering plays. I was okay. always good at always good remembering at that. plays. I would get confused, you know, when it can be like one set play, but it turns into like three different sets you can use it in. Yeah. I'll kind of get confused with that. But like after a while, it just got easier. Right. Like, and in New York City, mm-hmm. the basketball is pickup pretty much, right? Like even in yeah. high school, like we ran a couple plays, but – we relied on pick and roll. We played ISO ball, and it was just like there wasn't that much structure. Would you agree? Yeah. In New York, like you never, it didn't like you had a couple plays again, like at Naz, but at the end of the shot clock, we gave the ball to Bianca or to out the way. <laughs> whoever yeah. had it, whoever had the hot hand would get the ball yeah. and move out the way, literally. Mm-hmm. So how different was that transitioning to? I don't know what what was the playing style like at Detroit? Was it a, a ton of plays, pick and roll, walk the ball up the court, or was it more like? pick up like we're just gonna play get to the rim a lot of iso was it a hard transition it was a hard transition because i was so used to you know get the ball and go and nazareth and aau mm-hmm. and all that stuff and then i had to get used to okay get it all right let's set a play okay so that is how the style was yeah that was freshman year though because we only had seven players he didn't right. want to you know get tired coming into 12 down yep yeah, sophomore year, we had about 14 players on the team. 
we had about two freshmen come in and four freshmen, four transfers. So we had about six to seven people. Yeah, five transfers. Right. So we had about seven people come in. So that was, you know, that year was probably the best year because we went to the championship, the Horizon League championship. We almost made it to the NCAA tournament. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, with that year, he was more of, okay, get the ball at the rim and go. Just go. Because we had a quicker team. We had, you know, uh, our team wasn't really heavy set. Like, everybody was, you know, good with their weight, you know, and stuff. But everybody moved very well. But the only problem we had was knee injuries. We had a lot of knee injuries, right. ankle and foot injuries and all that stuff. But, at, you know, even with that, like, we, he was just still like, okay, miss the ball. You know, they missed the basket, just go. Get it out and push it. And, and you enjoyed that now, right? Yeah, like if there's nothing, all right, pull it back, go ahead and set the play. But our regular play was red. That was like our set, you know, what's that word? I forgot the word. Like pro, your primary like offense. Our, yeah, our, our regular primary offense, man-to-man play, red. Go straight into red, pick and roll, you know, throw it on the other side, back, screen, flare, all that stuff. So that was like our main play that every single team knew. They was like, okay, they're going to call red. Yeah. We're red work all the time. <laughs> no one could stop it. Mm-hmm. And you liked and you liked that though, because it gave you more freedom, right? As opposed mm-hmm. to running a set play where it has to go here, 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 and then yeah. yeah. And I think for me, uh, one of the hardest things about transitioning from New York City ball to a more organized system was I didn't know a lot of the terminology, like a flare screen, down stick. We didn't do any of that. We set an on the ball screen and that was it in, in New York City, right? Yeah. Like, I don't think we ever set a back screen. Like, I, I, don't, I don't remember it at least. Exactly. Right? So that was a hard adjustment for me was like this terminology. Like, what is that? I don't, I've never heard of that. Like the elevator screen, like coming off the, mm-hmm. you know, oh, <laughs> those, <laughs> and it's right. a certain way you had to play off it, playing defense, like curling around it or trying to get through it. Like, all those different screens, but that's why when it comes to, you know, college basketball, a lot of girls don't even know, like, they're going to have position coaches. So, like, you have your point guard coach, your shooting, shooting guard coach, your post, you know, your post coach. And I'm so grateful that I had a great point guard coach, Coach Keisha Blanton. She's the, now she's the head coach at Oakland University. Oh, wow. Which is in, our, is in uh, Detroit's conference, Horizon League. Mm-hmm. And, you know, she's put so much confidence into me that like we will sit down after practice. She's like, all right, come to my office. We're gonna have to watch what you did wrong, <laughs> like in the game. And like, you know, she'll break down the plays for me to make it easier for me, you know, and to make it easier for my teammates. So it's good to have like a really good, you know, coach in your position yes. who can, you know, who believes in you, who's gonna keep trying with you. So mm-hmm. yeah, I'm really grateful for her. Did you ever have any moments uh where you remember like I don't you you kind of doubted yourself and, and you were sort of like I don't know if I can play D1 or maybe it was your freshman year. Usually it's your freshman year or did you kind of just wanted to quit. Did you ever have moments like that? Yeah, my sophomore year. Sophomore year, okay. Yeah, because I went from playing a lot my freshman year mm-hmm. and, you know, me thinking, it was a thing like, okay, because I'm about to be a sophomore and I got experience, I'm going to keep playing. I kept telling myself, I still got to keep working and working hard. Never set in stone. Yeah, yeah because there's going to be other point guards coming in and there's going to be other point guards I have to, you know, talk to and help them out. So I kind of got discouraged my sophomore year because I didn't play a lot. Mm-hmm. Um, I believe I was going to end up transferring, but I didn't. thought about it. I thought about it because the bond that I created with some of the coaches, the coaching staff at Detroit, and even my teammates, mm-hmm. you know, they started, they became family now. It was just like, I don't feel like leaving to go to another school and redoing all over again. Right. It's so like, I, mm-hmm. yeah, I just bit the bullet and I was just like, you know what, I'm going to stay at Detroit. I'm going to get my education, and I'm just going to, you know, keep playing basketball. <laughs> like, I'm right. not going to let anything discourage me anymore. Like, I've had – I know college – you know, we're going to have our days. Everybody's going to have their days. And I've – I had my days a lot in Detroit. There was times I just got homesick. I wanted to come home so bad. But, you know, I just had to stick with it. I had to deal with it because this is what I wanted to do. And another factor, you're so far from home, mm-hmm. right? What, what I've never – and by the way, I've never been to Detroit. That was my first time going to Detroit. All right. You're, yeah. in, you're, you know, on the uh, pretty much almost across the country now, right? Yep. How, what was the, the, the plane ride? What was, how long was that? Plane ride is literally, it's like 45 minutes. <laughs> From it's Detroit 40. to New York? Mm-hmm. Oh, that's it. So, but you had to, obviously you had to take a plane, but you weren't yeah. coming home very often. Mm-mm. Like if I had, like, especially with our practice schedule and everything, mm-hmm. he tried to make everything easier for us. Like, especially for people who live far. 
Because right. I lived 10 hours away. Yeah, yeah. So, like, you know, he would try to make sure, like, okay, like, if he had a tournament in Florida, make sure our parents can come down there, have a place for them to stay and all that stuff. Like, he tried to make things easier for people, right. which was really nice of him because not a lot of college coaches would even think of that, mm -hmm. you know? You might have gone home what? Did you go home for Christmas and then maybe at the end of the season? Twice a year, you'd say you go yeah, home? We, went home, we got to go home for Christmas for like three to four days. We had an extension. Some, some schools only got two days. Yeah, we got like three, I think. It was, yeah. yeah. Um, I went home after school, I believe. Sophomore year, I didn't. I stayed. Right. Going into my junior, I stayed because I wanted to get more. You stayed for the whole, the whole summer. The whole summer. I came home for probably like a week. Yeah. And I was working on I was working on campus and the I just summer is so out. big. The summer is so big. People don't understand. Yeah. If you just spend one summer on campus, you're gonna and again, it's not like your whole team is there. Maybe there's a couple yeah. players that decide to do it. That is gonna be the time where you can develop so much. You work you can worry about yourself as opposed to having to worry about everybody else on the team. Yeah. And that's the biggest I notice people who have grown, you know, their game, it happens over the summer. It does. Yeah. For yeah. sure. I think staying on campus, I think honestly just going away to school really shaped me into the person who I am today. Yeah, because Bri, I remember, so you're very close with your parents. I remember that specifically from, like, I, I, I am very impressed that you were able to be so yeah. far away from home for, for those four years, right? Yeah. yeah. You're saying that did shape, so yeah, just quickly touch, like, how hard was that being away from home for that long? It was pretty hard because I'll say, like, freshman year, I give it day three in Detroit, I call my dad, I'm boo-hooing, I'm crying, I'm like, I want to come home, I want to quit, I want to come home now, like, I was just completely homesick, like, I'm, you know, not being able to come home, your mom cooking food for you, <laughs> like, have to worry about, okay, how do I get food, I didn't have a car my freshman year, I didn't even have my license, so, <clears throat> excuse me, so I had to depend on my teammates, like, okay, hey, Shay, can you take me this place, hey, Tay, can you take me, like, it was kind of annoying because I didn't, I don't really like asking people. I know, I know, yes. Me, but I had to do that. I had to, I had to take sacrifices. Mm -hmm. And even my dad, he had went away to school too. So he told me, he was like, Brett, like, I went away to school. You can do it. Like, I know you can do it. He's like, you don't want to just quit, you know, right now. Like, he's like, if you quit and come home, what are you going to do? What's your backup plan? Right. And I'm like, you, you know what? You're right. After I finished crying to my dad, I don't think I really cried to my parents about being homesick ever again. <laughs> That's all you needed was that, like, one all time. I needed. And he said that, too. He was like, you're going to have that day where you're going to call me and you're going to be crying. And I'm like, I'm not going to cry. Right. <laughs> so yep. looking back on it now, though, your decision to go to Detroit completely fulfilled. Like, are you, super, like, very happy about it, satisfied with, the, with everything? I'll say I'm satisfied mm -hmm. with everything. I could have been better. I could have done more. Mm -hmm. But – you know, everything happens for a reason. And yep. I'm still happy that, you know, that you I had an opportunity to play D1. Yep. I had an opportunity to go to school for free. My parents didn't have to dish out not a penny. Yep. And I was going to go back and get my master's. I wanted to get my master's at Detroit. But then, you know, I don't know. School, away again. Yeah. I was just like, yeah, I don't think I can do school right now. <laughs> I need a break. <laughs> I'd rather just work right now right. and all that stuff. But yeah, like I'm satisfied with how everything went at Detroit. I'm happy that I got my scholarship. I'm happy that, you know, I got to play there. And you I still have teams. You had some pretty good seasons, right? Yeah, yeah. We had a pretty – we had two pretty good seasons out of my four years, I'll yeah, say. And that's that's good. A lot of people yeah. don't – they don't win at all, you know. Yeah. So, and then, you know, I was happy to, you know, sign my papers to at least play overseas. But due to COVID, it kind of messed up. So that was – yeah, so let's talk about that. So your plan moving forward, you were going to play overseas? Talk about that a little yeah. bit. I had signed my papers to um, play in Australia. Oh, wow. This past oh. season, that would have passed, yeah. yeah. Um, and then the corona had came. Oh. I was with my agents, and they're like, you know, you're going to leave. I was supposed to leave the end of February. Right. And then sorry, March. So the March came, so, like, you know, I'm waiting. I'm waiting to hear stuff, and they're like, look. It's a lot of stuff going down in, the, in Australia. That's when the yeah. wildfires hit. Yeah, 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 yeah. I'm like, okay. So they're like, you know, it's a little wait for that. So I had to wait. Mm -hmm. And then two weeks later, the coronavirus And came. you're still, at this point, you're still working out. Mm -hmm. I'm just still working out. I'm at home, you know, working. And I'm just, you know, I'm like, you know what? I'm not going to okay. stop what I'm doing mm -hmm. up here just because I know I'm, you know, I have an opportunity to play overseas because anything right. can happen. 
Yes. So That's after, so yeah. yeah. So after the wildfires, two weeks later, coronavirus, the coronavirus hit. So I'm yeah. like, okay, it's a no go for me going overseas. And I believe my agent had reached out to me a couple months later, mm-hmm. you know, during the pandemic and everything. And she's like, you know, just keep working out, keep, you know, Thank doing everything you. that you're doing because something's going to happen. Like something's going to pop up. Like I still have the opportunity to play overseas. Right. But I don't know, like me being at home and, having three jobs now starting my own business it's like I don't think I really want to even try to go anymore because I know the second wave of the coronavirus is going to hit too and I don't want to be stuck in a country not being able to you know to be home and that's so far away yeah yeah Yeah. so So, but so in the meantime you said you started a business talk about mm -hmm. your uh it's some training business right so talk about what you're doing now so right now I'm training and I I'm training about two, two to three days out the week. Mm-hmm. Have a couple clients, and you out know, Brooklyn, right? this is still out of out of Brooklyn, New York. Yep, still in Brooklyn. Um, Give you some shout outs in case anyone's listening here. Yeah. <laughs> um. So, I would say like the pandemic has helped me too. Like it's, I had my days, but it has helped me because oh, I got hired for two jobs. So, which was a really good thing because a lot of people has been struggling. You know, a lot of people lost their jobs due to the coronavirus, and I just got hired to be a head coach, head JV coach at Riverdale Country School. That's awesome. Yeah. yeah, so like, you know, I've had like a lot of good things, a lot of positive things happening for me during the pandemic. And then I just got a substitute teaching job in oh, New Jersey. Go. So it's just a lot of stuff are working out for me right now. So, you know, overseas is still in the back of my head, but it's like, I'd rather teach the game. Right. You know, you're you're, shifting, from, and you're stuff. shifting from being a player to now, like all the things you've experienced, all of the legendary people that you've played with, you went yeah. to Detroit, all your experiences, you can now kind of shift and help other people kind of reach that that yeah. same level of success that you had. Yeah. And that's what I've always wanted to do because I know there's a lot of players out there who don't who doesn't have a role model in their life. You know, some of their parents never really played basketball or played the next level. And so it's like them coming to me and asking me questions. I feel good about that because it's like, okay, I can tell you, you know, what I you know, what I experienced and all that stuff. Yeah. Like, for example, she had just went to school the other day. Jakia got, she went to Nazareth. Mm-hmm. Um, she was a two guard at Nas. She just graduated this year. And a lot of people say that me and her look like, I call her like my little sister, <laughs> literally. Right. Um, you know, ever since I met her last year, because I started, you know, really training last year, mm-hmm. the end of 2019, I had met her and all that stuff. And, you know, I watched her game. I watched how she was playing. Coach Ron told me, he pulled me to the side. He pulled her to the side. He said, look, Jaquia, I want you to listen to whatever Brittany says. <laughs> and she's just like, who is this? And he was just like, look, she's going to – he basically told me, he's like, take Jaquia under your wing right. and, you know, mold her into the player who she, how she's supposed to be. Mm-hmm. And ever since that day, and then coronavirus hit and all that stuff, I had texted her. I'm like, look, like, what are you doing? Are you working now? Do you have a school to go to? What's going on? Because I know she had just graduated from Nazareth. And she's like, Coach Britt, I don't have nothing, you know. It's stuff that I'm hearing things, or I'm going to this school, that school. Or situation that you were kind of in. Exactly. And I'm like, you know what? I got you. We're going to work out tomorrow. Ever since that day, I would say, like, that was in May. We've been working out every single day up until she left for college the other day. And she gets, and so she got something. She got something. She got a full D, full Division two ride to Virginia Union University. Wow. Yeah. 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 <laughs> that's what that see and that obviously probably makes you feel pretty fulfilled and obviously happy for her like it really does of it, you know yeah because it's just like from watching her play like you know how she was dribbling before how like I told her like her body language the same thing with me her body language her facial expressions and all that stuff I'm like it's a lot of stuff that you got to touch up before you go to school and she listened to everything I was saying you know I'll bring her to the open gyms like it was a lot of it's open runs in the Bronx mm-hmm. on Thursdays playing against pro pro girl basketball players, girls who play overseas, girls who play in WNBA. And I'm telling her, like, come on, come play with us. Because right. I want her to be ready for the next level. Like, I want her to play for the first year. year. Hmm? Is that, yeah, it's only, that's only going to help. Yeah. That's what so, you did, though. Like, coming full circle, you played against people that were better than you. Yeah. As a freshman in high school. Yeah. Yeah. That's so. That's awesome, Britt. That's, that's a good way to close it out. Yeah, yeah that was that – was, yeah, just the fact that you're able to help people and kind of see the same thing that you were going through, but now be able to share it through all your experiences and inspire them and motivate them. That's a, that's a pretty cool story. So 
Glad to have had you on, Britt. Awesome. Thank you, story. <laughs> you know, we go way back. So, yeah. So, thank you for being on today. That's no pretty problem. Awesome. I